as of now i've done a placement working with young people which i talked about in my last video feel free to watch that and i'm currently doing a placement with adults so i thought i'd just share what differences you might notice if you choose to work with young people or adults and if you want to work with both then you can look out for these things so i'm going to begin with the adults and talk about the things that you can look out for all the things that i've noticed in my time working with adults so depending on age memory can be a problem when you're working with adults not saying dementia or anything like that i'm just saying for example if you're trying to talk about childhood experiences very clearly or in a very detailed way what they were like as a child or certain relationships they had as a child or interactions they had how they felt about certain things as a child a lot of it kind of becomes a bit hazy or a bit of a vague memory and they can't pinpoint specific things in a lot of detail and sometimes they might just need a lot of time in the session to actually think about it so you might ask like do you remember what things were like with your mom and they might be like mm. and they might spend like a few seconds trying to think or trying to remember and trying to really dig deep which i found to be quite common yeah like i said it's not necessarily depending on how old they are but i've noticed that across the board with adults in general 20 plus 18 plus whatever you class as an adult there tends to be a bit more difficulty in terms of finding or remembering memories from childhood especially when you're trying to deal with attachments or you're trying to talk about family it might be a bit difficult for them to remember certain things another thing i noticed working with adults is that they tend to be more competent when explaining their feelings or their experiences they can talk about their feelings more openly and they can express them better I'm not saying that this is the consensus across the board you know there are some adults who've never really been good at speaking about their feelings or explaining their feelings so it's not to say that every single adult is going to be competent at explaining their feelings but naturally most of them have tended to be able to kind of be able to express because you know they know more words generally than younger people so they can pick out words that express their feelings better their experiences better and some of them have had previous therapy before so they know a lot of terminology from psychology and therapy and counseling they can speak about attachment some of them you know can talk about defense mechanisms they might know some things because of their previous therapy experiences and as well because they're adults they can see a lot of things online they can look at things online more so they have access to more information so they know maybe therapeutic terms and therapeutic words so you don't have to then take time out to explain certain things because they already know these things and they already know certain words which is a good thing it helps because then it saves time in terms of having to do psychoeducation during a session I think that is probably going to be a bit harder to work through certain things that have been an issue or a problem for decades and decades and decades. Like if somebody has been dealing with something for like three, four decades, it's going to be much harder to work through that and to get rid of it or to overcome it compared to someone who's only experienced it for like one decade or five years. So that's, I think, a challenge to consider when working with adults and to keep in mind when working with adults. Yeah, you're going to be working with something that's been more cemented, more normalized to them something that they're more used to even if they don't like it even if it's not a good thing even if they know it's bad for them it's still not going to be easy for them to change because you know we know that we are the result of our habits and the things that we repeat so if someone has been doing something for 50 years it's going to be very hard for them to just turn it around in therapy but that's not to say that it's always going to be difficult because some people come to therapy ready and determined to change their ways and they will do anything and they'll try anything to overcome it. Just because they're more willing and determined, it might be a lot easier to work with them compared to somebody who's coming to therapy not really keen on changing. Another thing I notice is that adults are a bit more intentional with therapy. They're more understanding of the importance of having goals and working towards goals. And I think that's mainly because they're paying compared to young people who are unlikely to be paying for therapy. With older people, obviously they're paying, they're using money from their salary, their livelihood to come to therapy. So there's a lot more intentionality behind it, a lot more effort, a lot more engagement because they're putting their time and money and effort into this. So I think that's a really nice Nice thing when you have somebody that you know is going to turn up week after week or they're going to make the time to reflect and do their homework because they are paying for this so they're going to put in that time and effort 
like I said previously, some of the older clients are likely to have had personal therapy before and this can be a good thing and a bad thing. So a good thing in terms of the fact that they might already know why certain things happened or they've already talked about like the deep stuff and now they just need maybe the action stuff or to actually move forward because maybe with that therapist they were just talking about it but they never did anything about it. So with you, it's like, okay, let's, let's do the work now. So in that sense, it can be helpful because then you're not having to start from the bottom you're not having to like start from square one but it's also important for counsellors and therapists to find out why the previous therapy ended what happened in the previous therapy not in detail of course but just like a general idea of the kinds of things that they talked about so for the client doesn't feel like they're constantly having to repeat themselves of course at some points they will have to but it's also good to ask why they left and why they decided to come back again and just good to know those things as well and another thing that might come up is the fact that they might be like like, oh my therapist was really bad therapist so I, I want another therapist try not to feel pressure it's like this automatic pressure that therapist was really bad and then you automatically think okay so that therapist was bad I need to be a really good therapist this time I need to make sure I help them I need to make sure that we fix whatever problem they've got and that pressure kind of comes on you automatically the moment you hear it and it's something that I would want you to be aware of not to like let it get to you I don't think this is specific to adults but it can happen with young people as well I had young people who would say you know my previous therapist was bad so this is not really specific to adults but even if they say their previous therapist was really good you might also feel like okay I need to make sure I live up to that I need to make sure that I don't make this experience bad for them. So just be aware of that if it does come up, if it's mentioned that, you know, their previous therapist was like this and like that, it doesn't become a source of pressure for you. So on to the young people. I think I'm going to begin with a similar point that I mentioned for the adults is that memory is going to be a lot better with young people because, you know, some of them, the ones I worked with were literally like 16, 17, 18. So of course, you know, childhood was not that long ago for them. So when I was asking about childhood, a lot of it was very clear to them. They remembered a lot of stuff. They could talk about a lot of stuff with a decent amount of detail. But of course, there's still certain ages that most of us don't remember, like four, five and below. Most of us don't remember memories from there. So that's the same across the board but the only exception is when there's trauma involved you know I had a client who had a lot of trauma and when I asked her about previous memories she kind of said I don't remember I don't remember I don't know I can't remember and that's not even the fact that she can't remember her brain has blocked out a lot of memories and she either doesn't want to access them or she can't access them so be aware sometimes when trauma is involved memory is going to be affected across the board not just with young people I mentioned this in my previous video that a lot of young people are referred to therapy especially in a school setting or even in general they might be referred by a GP or parents might refer them to CAMS so a lot of the time they are referred and as a result you might find that they're not as engaged or as interested in taking part in therapy it might be a bit more work to get them to see the benefits of therapy or to get them as engaged they might just come in and find it to be something they're kind of just doing to please mom and dad or something they just doing just because the school said so and they don't want to say no or they don't want to the school to look bad or they don't want to disappoint somebody by saying no to therapy so some of them might come in to therapy just because they've been told to and just talk to you about stuff some of them might genuinely open up some of them might just talk about anything and everything some of them will make the best of therapy i remember one who kind of just came in here and there she would come in and then disappear for two weeks come in disappear for like one week disappear for three weeks come back like she was just on and off and i remember when i asked her about therapeutic goals and she was like don't really know like i don't understand i don't really get it like i do it what goals what are goals for therapy like she didn't really seem like she was that bothered or cared or had anything in mind and that's the problem sometimes when somebody's referred they genuinely just please other people not necessarily to go in for themselves and yes they might even have stuff to talk about but they're not necessarily trying to work on anything or change anything so they'll just talk about things but nothing much will change in their lives and those are the kinds of people that maybe will show up and then disappear show up and then disappear or constantly be late because they're just not that bothered so working with young people of course there's gonna be a good chance that you're gonna hear a lot of slang so be prepared to ask what the meaning of some slang words are if you don't know some of them just explain without you asking i'm aware of most slang and i remember one of the girls wanted to explain to me what a certain word meant and I, in my head i was thinking i already know but 
she went and explained anyway so if you don't know slang don't be afraid to ask it just helps for you to stay in their frame of reference and to help with the therapeutic alliance so don't be afraid to ask if you don't know what certain slang words mean speak up because there's probably going to be words that you use and terminology that you use that's very psychological and from counseling that they might not understand so they will probably ask you so don't be afraid to ask so when you're working with young people you know 16 to 18 or even below you're working with a developing brain and there's you know a good side to this and a negative side to this good thing is that it's a developing brain they're still learning and absorbing a lot of information so they're you know quicker learners so if you say maybe let's try this technique to help with you with something they're more likely to absorb it quicker learn it quicker get used to it quicker it might even become a habit for them for the rest of their lives because they're still so young so that's definitely a plus they can absorb things and learn things quickly in therapy. On the other side, it might be harder for them to understand certain things. So there might be a lot of psychoeducation involved in explaining maybe attachment theory or explaining certain terminologies or trying to show them and explain to them why certain things happen in a certain way or how relationships work in a certain way and things like that. So in that sense, it can make the sessions a bit slow because they might be hearing a lot of this information for the first time and you might have to do a lot of psychoeducation in comparison to adults. Maybe if they've had therapy before, then of course they would already know certain things, but that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing I think that's important is to try and not give them homework, especially if they're coming to therapy and complaining about school pressure and the pressure of doing so much schoolwork, pressure from home, pressure from everywhere and exams or something like that. And then you're like, oh yeah, I've got some homework for you. Avoid homework if you can. Some clients will definitely be okay with it. I had a client who we'd set weekly homework. She was very eager. She set her own homework and she would come and report to me every week and tell me what she did and we'd change it up. She was very, very eager to do it. This is not going to be the same for all students. So definitely keep that in mind and consider every child individually and what they're talking to you about and whether they seem interested enough to even do homework and whether they are eager, whether they are intentional, whether they're going to be intentional and whether it's going to be actually helpful for them or whether it's going to add more stress to them. If they're already living a chaotic life, don't then add homework to that because it might make things worse because if they don't do the homework, they might come to you and feel bad. They might feel like a disappointment and it might just make things worse. Another thing I noticed is that sometimes with young people they would use their phones or they would just hold their phones like the whole session i had some that would like send text messages during sessions because like she was just holding it in her hand and she's like oh my sister just texted and they're like sorry let me just or their phone will like make a noise or they'll just hold it for the whole session some of them because they're like attached to it and some of them can't not hold something so they'll hold their phone or maybe they might leave their phone somewhere obvious so if it lights up they'll look at it they'll check it so i think try to set strict boundaries around cell phone use and just make it clear to them that phones are a no-no unless maybe they're expecting an important call or an important message or something just try to make it clear that phones are not allowed and shouldn't be used during the session but once again they're not paying clients so it's quite difficult <laughs> to make them more interested in the session Another thing I noticed, working in a school especially, so this might not necessarily apply to other settings like CAMS or wherever else, that in a school setting working with young people, they would often call me Miss. Even though I repeatedly told them my name, they would repeatedly call me Miss. And as young people, they're just used to every adult in the building being a Miss or a Mister. So to them, it just naturally rolls off the tongue that they see an adult Miss or Mister. And something you just have to get used to, because first session, I literally introduced myself and said you know I'm so and so and even some of them were like oh but you'll tell my teacher I'm like I'm not your teacher I'm, I don't have anything to do with your teachers I don't speak to your teachers I don't have any form of communication with your teachers because some of them hold you to the same standard as their teachers they will then refer you to as like miss or mister so yeah get used to that if it does happen and something I briefly touched on was that some of them may not have therapy goals because they've been referred so they might come in and just be like don't have any goals i'm not really sure what goals to set because they've been referred and they're not even 100 percent sure why they've been referred to therapy in the first place and what they should be working on or trying to fix so they won't have therapeutic goals of which i would say don't try to force the therapeutic goals but as time goes on maybe when you do a review 
maybe look back and say oh i've noticed this is what's been coming up a lot maybe we could create some goals around this or maybe we can try to maybe focus on that or is there other stuff that is impacting it that we could focus on and even just as the sessions go on you might notice that there are certain things that are a common problem or common pattern in their life that could become a therapeutic goal so of course there's going to be times when goals just don't come about try and be okay with it try and sit with it and be okay with that because yeah i had that girl who had no therapeutic goals and that was the way our sessions went we just kind of spoke and i had to just mentally notice what was kind of constantly coming up and kind of create my own invisible goals even though she didn't voice them I didn't want to impose them on her but I kind of knew the consistent things that kept coming up and that were bothering her that I kind of made into goals without bringing it up because she made it clear that she didn't have goals or didn't really understand why she needed to have goals or didn't see what goals were for so you can have to be quite flexible when it comes to goals sometimes with young people so that brings me to the end of this video be sure to watch the video i did on working as a counselor in a school if your passion is children or you see yourself counseling children one day be sure to watch that next and i'll see you in the next video adios au revoir